Jessie B. Scrapbooking back with another process video. I'm going to be using this beautiful paper pad and this picture of my daughter and our pastor's wife. And now I just have to pick out paper. This is going to be my background. And the process starts for picking the paper. So the scrap lift I am doing, I found on scrapbook.com's um, Instagram. And it is done by uh, Kylie K. And it is absolutely beautiful. And so I thought this paper pad would be perfect um, with those kind of soft um, colors and the flowers. And so I'm looking through all the papers and trying to figure out what I want to use. And then I look at the cover and I'm like, oh my goodness, they're already squares and they're a perfect size. So I'm going to cut up my cover of my paper pad. And that's exactly what I'm doing here. And I will put this whole paper pad now into a big uh, two gallon Ziploc bag to keep all the papers together since I took the cover off. <laughs> but I'm just using my um, cutter, yeah, <laughs> words are gone. I'm just using my slicer here and I'm slicing all the um, little squares apart and I'm not going to make you watch me do every single one, but um, I don't use all the squares, um, but I use a good portion of them. And uh, I just think that this actually turned out really, really pretty and so simple. So here's all my squares all cut out. And I absolutely love that um, background that I chose. And now I'm just trying to figure out which ones I want where. And I am looking at her um, scrap, the original scrap um, layout um, uh, quite a bit, kind of, because I just, I liked it so much. I wanted to keep the kind of the same colors and the same spots and stuff. I mean, it's not identical, but um, I you can definitely tell that I looked at this and scrap lift it. <laughs> so I'm going to um, rough up the edges. And I realized uh, that I um, did most of that um, off camera. So I just cut that all out. And I wasn't going to um, rough up the edges of the middle ones because I wasn't sure if you'd see it. But then I realized you do. So I remember this time to do it on camera and I just rough up these three and then that fourth one, you're not going to see it all. So I just take it out and I'll put it with the rest of the little squares that are left and come up with another uh, layout with them later. <laughs> so there's what it's going to look like. And um, yeah, this picture was really cute. Um, my kids went over to, uh, our pastor's house and, uh, for a youth, um, night, it was, um, college age kids went over there and they had games and, um, just a lot of fun, had dinner and everything. And, um, the pastor's wife sent me this adorable picture of her and uh, my daughter Corey and I love it because she's like the sweetest sweetest person in the whole wide world and so here I am cutting out these um flowers and I'm just gonna fussy cut just that section that I cut off and then I went into my stash of papers I've already uh, fussy cut all these flowers. I've already fussy cut from this exact same pad and I am just going to grab different ones um, But they're like I said, they're all from the same exact paper pad. So they all coordinate really well and um, I'm just kind of getting an idea how I want them to lay out and Then I'm like, okay, we're just gonna commit and put all these little squares down and it actually went pretty fast. 
I didn't measure or anything. I just eyeballed it and called it good. <laughs> because with it having the rough edges, it, you can do that. You don't have to have everything lined up perfectly because those edges make it already look a little bit unperfect. So it makes it a lot easier to um, get your grid down. And I just love all these patterns together. And I like how the covers, the patterns of them, it's the full page. So the pattern is all of a sudden a whole lot smaller. You take a full 12 by 12 pattern and drop it down to a 2 by 2 size and it changes the look of it. But, yep, so I'm going to do that. And then I'm going to pop up the picture onto some fun foam. Um, because it's not exactly going to lay flat if I don't do this. So this here helps it lay flat and brings that picture to the front. And I'm going to go ahead and use some um, glue too. That's for long lasting hold. The tape runner is for instant stick. And then I grab this foam roll of tape that I got at the Dollar Tree. And I'm just going to start um, popping up these uh, flowers. And some I pop up, some I leave flat. And I'm just going to do a, ends up being a diagonal um, look. It wasn't originally, I think, what I was going for. I was, you know, following this, the other layout. And she had a top cluster and then a little cluster beside the picture and then a bigger bottom cluster. And I have that, but my top and middle cluster kind of run into each other. And then my bottom cluster is going to end up going on a more diagonal uh, look. And that beautiful little uh, blue flowers, little sprigs that I put in there. Yeah, they don't stay there. They get moved. But I really like them. But yeah, they, they are, they're going to end up getting moved later. And uh, that one, I pulled the backing off the tape before I was ready. I just got in a hurry, and I pulled the backing off. And so I have it just laying there until I'm ready for it because, yeah. <laughs> I just got so excited. So I decided to put it there. It works good. And I'm trying to keep it so that... Like the lighter color flowers are on the darker color backgrounds or on a contrasting uh, nether flower. So I don't want to put the pink flowers just directly onto the pink background. So I'm going to use those blue flowers and tuck behind so that the pink flowers kind of pop off the page there. And uh, let's see how this is kind of looking very downhill yeah it stays like that <laughs> but I do fill it out a little bit more and so I even use this the uh, flowers that I cut off from the edge of the paper and then I just tuck them in like behind the picture there and stuff so. it's really nice having these flowers cut out ahead of time I did uh, I think four or five pages of flowers that I cut out ahead of time and just have them in those little baggies. And so when I'm doing a project like this, I don't have to stop and uh, cut out all those flowers. I just grab the bag and keep on going. But I am running low, so I'm going to have to go and cut some more out. The next time we sit down as a family to watch a movie, I'll grab those out and start cutting some more flowers out. So... Yeah, this has been a lot of fun um, doing these uh, scrap lifts. Um, so many people out there have so many amazing ideas, and I just want to copy them all. <laughs> so I went in and I found these purple flowers that um, I had cut out earlier, and I dumped them right here just off camera. So that's what I'm working my way through and I love the pop of purple um, against the, all these other colors because I do have purple squares in the background so they don't look out of place at all and they're just 
they, they fill out the um, cluster very nicely. Yeah. And so there we go. I think our third just about done. Hmm, one more. Oh yeah, I decided to cut that um, leaf off. I liked it on there, but um, it ended up being um, covering my daughter's uh, part of her head. So uh, we just cut it off. And this is where I moved that little uh, sprig, and so I can stick this. Um, and I move it down because I really, really liked it. So I just moved it down to the bottom cluster. And now I'm going to put a purple flower up in the top cluster. And I think that was my original plan. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> and, oh, I cut it. It was a two flower. And I cut it and took one of the flowers off. And then I love the butterfly she had in her, in the original. So I'm adding a butterfly here. I'm going to flip through this um, a sticker book, and it's a Maggie Holmes sticker book, and I absolutely love it. It was like one of the very first sticker books I ever um, got, and I got it at Tuesday morning. And as you can see, I've well used it. <laughs> used it well? A lot of it has been used up. There you go. <laughs> so I got these um, really cute little... Um, dimensional stickers uh, for Christmas for my sister-in-law and I really wanted to use this word friends but it had this other flower that did not match that was attached to it so I just pulled off the word friend that was on top and it still leaves the word friends on the bottom with that other flower so I can use it on a different layout it just won't be dimensional, it'll be flat. And I thought that worked out perfect. And so then this little piece of vellum I got, and it was, I think it's for like cards. Um, my sister found it at a yard sale when she found a whole bunch of stamps for me. And so she sent it to me. And I am just going to cut it out. And I left that long piece as a place to put my um, tape on it. And then I can just tuck it under the flower and you won't see the um, how it's taped down. And so my title is going to be Sweet Friends. And I do put a tiny little spot of ATG just to hold the tea down. But I don't push it down so you can't see it. But it, it's tacky enough to keep it. And then with having the black uh, friends word there, I figured I needed a little bit more black scattered about so I put on the top flower it says hello the next one down says pretty and the bottom one says shine and then I come in with my puffy paint in black and I do my little um, flight path of the butterfly and then put just three little dots in different spots all around the clusters and then this one is done. I hope you like it. Please give me a thumbs up if you do. And if you want to see more, please subscribe. And thank you so much for watching. I am having so much fun doing these. Enjoy the close-ups. Bye.